this is my current setup for this evening. Well, that's my cooler that'll have to go with me in the car to uh, not f in order to not feed the cinnamon colored bear. I'm not gonna get out my tablecloth because I'm just gonna have hot dogs tonight. But I went and got a little bit of water. And this is um, that's my tent site, but I'm not going to put my tent up since I want to get a new site tomorrow with maybe a little bit more trees and away from my new neighbors who I can tell are going to be noisy. These are my chuck boxes. They just have my camping gear in them, which is super handy. Cooking stuff, fire starting stuff, things like that. And this is um, the Reflectix to my back window. I've just spray painted that side of it. And then I sleep in my car. So it helps me feel a lot more safe when I'm camping alone. But that's where my cooler will go. My dry food is right there. This is my negative 15 degree bag. I brought it because I thought it was going to be a lot cooler than it really is. This is my Nemo pillow, luxury pillow. I haven't blown up, but it is awesome. And this is a four inch memory foam trifold mattress. And it is a wonderful, it is so nice. I have a Tempur-Pedic at home and I do not miss it when I go camping. So here's my Reflectix on my windows, spray painted black on the other side. So you really can't see in. Uh, and then I just put my bag right up here so it's easy access to get to. There's my Nemo luxury shower. Uh, that I can use to wash dishes, wash my hair, take a shower, but I did not bring my privy shelter this time. Uh, and this is just a basic cheapo grocery store window covering. I went and drove around this morning, <coughs> excuse me, and found this great spot that's very private and I even have a bear box so I do not have to sleep with my food so I already put my cooler in there this morning went up and switched my campground so my neighbors way over there there's a table over there but they're not as close as my ones at my other spot and there's more trees, so that's awesome. Here I am with my new campsite all set up and I'm ready to start cooking breakfast even though I think it's really about afternoon, closer to afternoon time so this will be like a brunch. I'm gonna dish up. I mean, not the most beautiful looking, but doesn't mean that it's not going to be delicious. Oh yeah, this looks delish. Where the um, 
antler arches are. good time to come because it's cooler there's not as many people I'm digging it I'm gonna go um, when I get, am done here I'm gonna go back and make some tinfoil dinners Jackson Hole shootout sorry no gunfights on Sunday Drumstick? Okay. Let's see. Here we go. So what's your name? Sydney Montana. Sydney Montana? Uh-huh. Nice. What's yours? Rachel. Rachel Illinois? Yep, there you go. <laughs> Rachel, Utah. Oh wow, cool. <laughs> you know what it's all about, then. You're a western gal. Yep. Oh, okay. Thank you. Appreciate it though. Yeah, have, a, have a good evening. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting Thank you. you. That was Sydney, Montana. Hopefully, I didn't get him too off the beat. But that was fun. I was just gonna film him for the, you know, for fun. But hey, why not join him? That was quite the experience. chicken tin foil dinners got chicken some ranch cheese and I read that cabbage if you line your tin foil with cabbage it helps the food from sticking so I'm gonna try that and then broccoli and 
stuffing. I saw these thinly sliced chicken breast in the store. Oof, they're pretty big. This is like really big. Um, so I'm gonna use it. It's really like one chicken breast cut in half, let's be real. All right, then we put on, I'm not using my contaminated chicken hand. Put on the broccoli and then sprinkle it with cheese. I hope I don't ruin this. Looks like it's gonna be good. And then you do like a tablespoon of ranch tablespoon or two tablespoons of ranch, I don't know. Okay, we'll see how that goes. My 15 minutes are up, and as you can see, this wood does not want to stay lit, and I only have a fire because I got lighter fluid. So, I would not recommend buying wood from this company. I'm going to try to buy some wood from the grocery store tomorrow and see if that's any better. So, the chicken and the broccoli are actually very good. The, uh... Stuffing, however, not so much. I really destroyed that. So, but chicken and broccoli were, uh, I mean, a, a success. Hidden Falls hike, and this is the boat launch if you want to take the boat across, which will shave off like two miles, I think, but I'm not going to do that.
such a great destination hike because it feels like air conditioning down here. This is Meaners Ferry Historic District. I wanted to come check this place out. Take a walk back in time. It was a homestead along the Snake River and this guy with the last name Meaner, he would provide boat rides. Do not board the ferry. Here is the pulley system. That is quite heavy duty. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you guys? Yeah. So is this the original building? Yes. Yep. Wow. So the oldest part of the building is the back room. Okay. That's 1894. Okay. In 1895, the kitchen. And then 1905, the store. That's right. It was built in three parts. Right. Okay. Thank you. Wow, this is so cool. You can, it's like not, it's not roped off. So you can actually go up to stuff. I'm not going to. Looks like a secretary desk. They did not hear planes flying overhead back in the late 1800s. So this was the root cellar, and this is quite interesting because um, what they would do is they would go and get ice from the Jackson Lake and bring it here and then cover it with sawdust and it would stay cool clear until the summer months. So that's quite impressive. I don't know how deep down it goes, but that's awesome. Bill Meaner, here he is. Meaner's Ferry. The Snake River. So Bill Meaner, Bill Meaner would charge 25 cents to take a man and a horse across. He would charge 50 cents for a man and a team of horses. And then if he was making a trip and you were riding alone, he would take you for free. And so that was the only way to get across the river up until I think it was 1929 is when they built the bridge. And with there being a lot of snow here in Wyoming, they would use dog sleds to get around in the winter time. I was listening to some kind of audio tour on the app for Grand Teton National Park and that's how I found out about all this. So I actually wanted to come and check it out. There's not a lot of people here because they're all about the cool hikes and Snake River and stuff like that, but this is interesting. The Episcopal Chapel of the Transfiguration. Is this the bell that I keep hearing? That is really loud. Sorry. 
sorry about that. I don't know what they're looking at, but maybe they preach from inside that window there, I don't know. Private. Now I'm off to go get some better firewood that will hopefully burn. Um, maybe find a bigger flint steel and get cracking on dinner before it gets dark. I went and bought um, this is the only flint rod, flint steel that I could find. So, I mean, there's more of a handle there, so I should be able to do that. I had this already. I did go buy, try to buy a knife sharpener, but they were $40 and this knife was only 20. So I followed the instructions on how to sharpen it. So we'll see how well it does. And I'm going to make the one stick fire that I saw Ranger Mike do using one stick. He said it should be about a foot long, the size of your wrist. This is bigger than my wrist and I'm going to cut it into four quarters and I'm going to make four things. I'm going to make two feather sticks and then three sizes of wood. One is a matchstick size, second is a um, pencil size and the third is a marker size so let's get started and I did buy new wood at the grocery store so you do um, as the tool to baton the wood I'm gonna cut it into four quarters Okay, so now I need to make feather sticks. So you just shave it, oh god. You just shave it a bunch down, but don't cut it off, which I'm not doing a very good job on. This knife is not sharp. I'm probably gonna have to forego the feather stick process because I do not have an adequate knife. Instead, I'm just going to do the matchstick size, pieces of wood, the pencil size, and the marker size. Some bigger pieces 
of the better wood. Tonight's tinfoil dinner is going to be hamburgers, potatoes, carrots, and some onions for flavor. Put some onions on each. And the seasoning that I'm using, um, just some salt and pepper. And then this is some Lipton soup or sauce mix. And then a little bit more seasoning for the hamburger, gourmet burger seasoning. I have red potatoes with the skin still on because they're divine that way. Carrots in stew, like in a crock pot. Oh, so good. I'm just going to wing it, okay? Bam. I'm just going to put this on the potatoes and carrots because it's probably going to be an amazing flavor. How can it not be? I'm feeling good about tonight's dinner. I'm going to put the this packaging back in my cooler just because we have bears here where I'm camping and we have bear boxes so I'd really rather not deal with any bears Wait. I went hiking today and I just had some crackers and kind bars for lunch, so I'm looking forward to this. Well, it looks good. These potatoes are fork tender. I don't know. Well, maybe the hamburger is done. Just didn't look like it. Yeah, I'm calling it. Yes, potatoes are good. Mm. I forgot to salt it. Let's try carrot. They're pretty soft. They could be a little bit softer, but they're very good. Mm. Tonight's dinner was a success. So once you get some really good coals going, 20, 25 minutes, and you'd be good to go. Mmm. So good. So I'm going to finish this and have some s'mores. And actually get to bed, I think, probably sooner than midnight. And then get up, pack up, head out tomorrow. I'm going to go to Yellowstone before I head home. Mm. Very good. All 
right, see you in the morning. the wind changed we could see it. Now I need to get gas and head home. Thanks for watching.